Hi everyone, welcome. I am going to do some snow. So this is out of Christmas Charm by Teresa Goodrich. This is not a color along, this is just showing snow. Um, I had a request for snow with no specifics of realistic or glitter or anything like that. But I think when people think snow, Teresa Goodrich is usually the most intimidating. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of snow on here. I picked this page because we have a little bit everywhere. We can do a little bit on the ground, we can do a little bit on the fence, we can do a little bit on the tree. You can see I played with it a little here. Um, and some roofs, so it's got a little bit of everything going on. Now if you wish, and you are into the whole glitter type of snow, I do have some pages done in that type of snow. And if you would like to see me do a page um, like out of this Camellia book, I can certainly do that. But for this one, I'm going to stick to the kind of snow I think we're talking about. No, sorry, I got a cat trying to climb on the desk. Um, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to start with this tree right here, and that's just for one reason. And that's because I don't want to forget to tell you that trees are opposite of everything. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my periwinkle, which is a dark um, like purplish blue. Now you can do this with grays, you can do this with purples. I prefer blue. It feels to me, it gives it that more icy chill feel. Um, but whatever color works with your page. Like I said, grays do work, purples. Okay. And you, as you can see, just a very thin line. Now, <clears throat> A lot of people want to start up here and do their darks up here and work their way down to light. That doesn't work on trees because the wind snow falls, it falls, but it slides. And the way snow is, it's um, darker on bottom, the old snow is on bottom, the fresh snow is on top. So like when we're doing this wreath down here, the dark snow will be on bottom because it's old, it fell first, right? It could have melted and refroze or whatever, but all the shadows are gonna be on the bottom because it's old snow. And then the white snow will be on top because it's the fresh snow. So trees are opposite, just keep that in mind because the snow slides down, so. Um, then I'm going to pull blue slate, which is just a light blue. And I know I'm gonna do another one that I haven't already colored because I know this is a little tricky to see where I'm putting the new color. Things I played with this one already, but. I had to decide what colors I wanted for this color along. I really want to use my pencil sharpener, but my cat loves the pencil sharpener and she's not going to leave the desk if she knows I'm using it. Okay, this is cloud blue. And I'm going over that all and blending it out, pulling it up. Kind of lightening that. And then a white. Now, if you are not using Prismacolor, but you have a white Prismacolor, it might be your best bet, but if not, any will work. Um, Prismacolor white is just really good for blending, period. Any pencils. And again, going over the whole thing. So the more you blue you put in, the more dramatic your feel is gonna be. If you just do a tiny dot, um, you know, you'll just get a tiny bit of color there, you'll have a lot of white going. Um, I like to bring mine up a little just so I do get that nice frozen feel. And then after, when the whole page is done, I don't usually do this first, I just take my white gel pen, Posca, whatever you have, and I black out the line. Trying to keep it smooth as possible. These gel pens are usually good about it, but I want a little bit thicker line. I wish they came in one, um, the millimeter thickness. That's okay. So I will get something to that effect when I'm done. So I will do a couple more on this tree here and then we'll play with some snow in other places. 
Now I did pull some other colors if you want to switch it up, you know, if you want your roof snow to be different than your tree snow, perfectly fine. But for this tree part at least, I'm going to stick with these colors. So I'll put a little less blue on this one so you can see the difference. I'm not actually coloring this page, um, so it doesn't really matter. It might matter if I would come back to it later and want to finish it and it's all mixed up. That was my periwinkle. That's my blue violet lake. Where did I set my blue slate? Blue slate. I'll try to be sneaky here. Pencil sharpener. So again, not coming up as high just to show you the different effects. Going to add a little blue lake to this one. Just a tiny dot. Okay, again, the cloud blue. Just lightens everything, dims it down a little. There's not a whole lot of color to snow. If you bring your blue up like this, it will just create little shadows. Okay, and then our white. Circular motions. Okay, just like that. And see, we have built in our own little shadows there, which kind of help. So this one has a little more blue on it, this one has a little less. Like I said, just play with it, kind of see what your eye likes. So like this one up here, I'm going to shadow a tiny dot right here just because this branch is kind of covering it. I'm going to leave the sides alone and do the bottom just like we did the other ones. I'm going to do a little around that snowball like it's just sitting there. Not sure if it's supposed to be falling, but it's got a darker line there, so it kind of looks like to me like it landed. Okay, blue slate. Again with the cloud. Making sure I got all the lines blended out. No lines in snow. It is a very smooth feel here. Alright, just like that. So that would be my tree. Again, if you want a little less blue and a little more snow, you could even skip the first darkest color. Do these ones up here real quick just to show you the difference. I would still use the cloud blue. Not as much to blend out there. Still blending out with the white. The white just makes the blue fade into the paper with no visible lines. So if you want a little lighter effect, um, just use your lighter blues. A little more dramatic effect, add a darker blue at the bottom. Okay, so let's play with this little bit on the fence right here. Um, I already put the periwinkle down, so now I'm going to do cerulean. This is just a lighter blue, a little less um, purpley. Okay, I'm going to put my own shadow marks in, just for fun to show. Okay, cloud blue.
Oops, making sure I got that cloud blue over all of it, and then white. So houses and rooftops are going to be the same. Um, down here on the ground portion, um, if you like the gray effect, this is how it would go. So you're not going to touch the top of the snow hill, right? Because that's going to be white. So where that line is, right behind it, we're going to put our shadow because it's going to shadow this one. Very important we don't touch the top of the snow on these ones. You can go up as high as you want, stay as low as you want, however you want it, just don't touch the top. Okay. I'm gonna do pay or pale blue slate. I don't want another dark color because I don't want real dark snow. And it does look um, dark, but remember your white will lighten. Okay, a little bit of cloud blue or sky blue light or whatever you are. Blending everything upwards with. So I like to put a nice layer down over everything and then come back and do my circles. I don't know why, but... Okay, right here I got a little on the top. I'm going to fix this. Maybe a little right here too. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with the white. So it just adds one more layer of depth to your snow if you do a little layer of the gray first. So you can kind of see the difference in just the blue and a little bit of the gray. And on these, I would still take my gel pen. Make sure I'm on camera here. Make sure it's working, of course. And I would still white out these lines in between. And that just makes that top layer of snow look that much whiter. If you can see the difference in these other ones. You could even go circles, make it look like rough snow. Concentration makes them quiet. So the rooftop up here, I want to keep it away from blending in because this spot right here would be blue. So what I would do, I don't know if I have an example in here. I've seen it in one of her books, but it must not be this one. Um, 
I come in with my light first and kind of shade everything. Not even going to worry about the snowballs. Not for this anyway. And then I would come in with whichever color is going to be my darkest, whether it be the dark here or here or the gray, whichever you decided you like. Now remember, new snot, new snow, new snot, <laughs> new snow is going to slide down because it's on a slant. So I'm kind of darkening here where there would be a little bit of buildup. There is a ledge right here, which is why I'm darkening. But this center part is going to be fairly white. And then the bottoms of my icicles, of course, will be darker. And I would probably even venture in with the darker, at least on one side of them. Maybe not the whole thing, but on one side of them. Okay, Still going to blend that out with the blue cloud. Cloud blue, backwards, sorry. Okay, up here I might add just a tiny touch of the gray. I gotta turn this a little, sorry. I can't get in the tiny spots without. Now you can shadow around this tree if you want, it just depends on what the look is you're going for, if the tree is right next to the building or not. Okay. Um, cloud blue over those spots I just put in. Blend it all out with that white. Going kind of up and down because that's the way the snow would go if it fell. Again, if you want a little shadow, just put a little line in. And then we'll blend it out a little bit. I'm going to add a little dark to these sides just so the middle looks a little poofier, fresher. And that's something you can kind of play with, depends on you, but I want this to look a little poofier as well. Alright, so there would be my roof. And again, if you think it's too much like your tree, you can add more, you can add less. Um, like this one right here. You could just barely tip it. Barely, barely. Barely, barely. This will give you a much uh, daintier snow effect. I guess light, light snow effect. Still blending upwards. That's the way the snow would be coming from. Sliding down is up. So one upwards. There is a much, much lighter effect of the snow. Just depends on what you're going for. Um, these ones down here, I will just show you without the gray real quick. We'll just do a lighter version
do half and half here. So we'll do light snow on this side and then keep the darker on this side. ever come back to color this page I'm gonna have a heck of an issue trying to figure out what in the world I did but it's all right I have tons of Teresa winter pages so again pulling a little bit upwards Do you have any weird lines? You can blend them out. You'll definitely know if you don't have enough cloud blue because it'll be harsh. All right. I'm going to point out. All right, so there is my little bit on snow. Questions, comments, anything like that, please let me know. Again, I will be doing um, some winter images with snow, so I will be doing it again, but um, the next requested one is a beach scene. So for those of you that were ready to start your Christmas coloring and needed to see, that is my version. I appreciate you watching. Again, if you want to see glitter, let me know. I can do that one as well. You wouldn't think there's much to it, but there are a couple helpful hints. Um, if you do snow and want to share, you can tag me on Instagram or in the Facebook group. And I hope to see you next video. Thanks for watching.